a lot of people really appreciated what I do and they really love me like a family. A lot of people have my personal number, so they always call us too. They come and tell me like, you know, they never had those. Some people never had those in their life. So they, they really, really love it and they recommend to their friends. That's how I build up the fan club. So I have fan club too now in 45 countries. An immigrant comes to New York City and makes it big with a simple idea. Known as Dosa Man, Thiru Kumar has fans all over the world, from California to Japan. His name is listed on 42 countries' guidebooks. His was the first vegan dosa cart in the world. Thiru Kumar's cart is situated in New York. His story is quintessentially American, and I can't wait to share it on our platform today. Welcome back to Immigrantly. I am your host, Sadia Khan. Welcome, Thiru. So good to have you here. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let's start with your childhood. You grew up in Sri Lanka and spent most of your youth cave diving in jungles and riding motorcycles, a far cry from what you're doing now. Can you talk a little bit about your life in Sri Lanka? It's very different. I'm actually a deep sea diver and swimming, you know. I'm very interesting in water and adventures and stuff. And I race motorcycle too. It's very fun life, yeah. So how was that experience growing up? Very different. <laughs> In what ways? So many ways, you know. Like I do a lot of different stuff a lot of people cannot do, you know. At what point did you decide to come to the U.S.? Because I've been a lottery green card visa. That's why I came to the United States. Oh, so you were part of the lottery program. Yeah. And I read somewhere that you got married really young. Um, yeah. You were only 18 when you got married, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then you came with your wife and yeah, your wife daughter. Yeah, wife and one daughter, yeah. What were initial few years like in New York? Very difficult. So I first third day I started like uh, construction work. Okay. Yeah, I never had experience before. Yeah, it's good, you know, because I, I'm willing to do anything. I was so young too, so I had to take care of the family, so I had to do anything, you know. So what are some of the jobs that you tried? I work in a gas station too, yeah, and then I work in an iron factory, and then work in a restaurants, yeah. And what was it like for your family adjusting in a new country, new city, you know, yeah. different culture? What were some of the challenges that you faced initially? Yeah, it's very difficult because, you, had, you know, so working hard and then so I try to educate the child, you know. I have only one daughter, so my wife put a lot of effort to it. So she, like, stay home and then I go to work like and, that, yeah. And at what point do you, did you decide to buy a cart and yeah. then go into this food business. I read somewhere that growing up, you were very fond of cooking. So yeah. you used to cook with your mother yeah. and your grandmother, yeah. right? Because I, I like busy. here in New York City, it's kind of like very busy. People don't have time to have a good uh, food habit. They go even go to a restaurant. They pay a lot of money. They won't get like a good food, you know. I'm actually turned into vegan and a lot of my friends are vegan. So that the time I decided to do something different like nobody ever did it. That's why I started the cart at uh, Washington Square Park right by NYU. How was the process like? It's a How... long waiting. Three and a half years I waited. And yeah. I've heard it's extremely expensive too. It's like you have to invest a lot of money to have Yeah, that's why, that's why I saved a lot of money when I worked little by little and borrow money from credit card and stuff. So paying, you know. What was your family's reaction? Were your family and friends skeptical? Were they supportive? What did they yeah, think they, at the First time? they thought it's not going to work and then I didn't ever give up. You know, I just, a lot of friends, they told, some friends, they support me. Some friends, they say it's not going to work in New York because everybody want hot dog and stuff. Because I wanted to try harder, you know. Then that's why I work very, very hard. Your dosas are different from dosas that are served. In what ways are they different? So many different. Because I make the dosas like totally beet free gluten-free. Okay. And like vegan people to get more protein. So I add up like more lentils. Less rice, so 67% is lentil, more protein. And uh, I'm inventor the Pondicherry Masala called. That's like a world hit, you know. 
Okay, uh, and is it like, is that like sweet? Is no, it it's not sweet. It's all savory crepe. And then we add up the spices, the people, the way they want. Talking about spices, apparently you have these different levels of spices, yeah. right? You have like low, medium, high, but then you have American medium yeah. versus Indian, medium. Indian or Desi medium, right? Yeah. Which which I'm sure is yeah. very different yeah. because growing up, like my threshold for spice is very different yeah. from even my kids' threshold because they are American for all practical purposes. They grew up here. They were born here. Yeah. So they can't have spicy food. Yeah. Um, so how do you, and then you have this big population from NYU, all yeah. the students who flock to your place. Who else is in your clientele? Like who else comes to have your dosa? It's people from actually all around the world. Hmm. So all, all like dosa is made for all nations. Basically, oh. <laughs> and what is the biggest compliment you've ever gotten from your your you know uh, clients or customers? A lot of people really appreciated what I do, and they really love me like a family. A lot of people have my personal number, so they always call us too. They come and tell me like you know they never had those. Some people never had those in their life, so they they really really love it, and they recommend to their friends. That's how I build up the fan club. So I have fan club too now in 45 countries. Oh my God, in 45 they wear, countries. They wear my t-shirts and hats too. <laughs> <laughs> what other things are on the menu? Other we than make those uh, like uttapam is like mixed vegetables. And okay. then we have like a, off the menu like samosa dosa. It's like we smash the samosa inside the dosa and serve with veggies and stuff too. And then we have roti curry. It's kind of like silon, like kotu paratha. Like parathas chopped up, mixed with grill, mixed with veggies and stuff. And you know, there's so much competition, especially when it comes to owning cart in New York City. Yeah. There are so many carts, right? Yeah. How do you distinguish your cart or yourself from other um, vendors in, in that broader Because I don't sell what they sell. I sell very different. Even the restaurant, what you get in my cart, you won't get it in the restaurant. It's very different. And I make the dosa better also, like a stone grind. It's like a whole school, you know, very old school style. No one ever do it like that here much. That's why, and it's naturally fermented too. I don't use though any yeast or anything. Everything what you get back home, like home style. Is it, I'm sure your, your recipes are fantastic, right? Yeah. But is it more than just recipes, how you do deal with your customers. Because, yeah, that's the again, important stuff. As I yeah. was prepping for this interview, I read that you're very warm and welcoming. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? And how does that help in terms of having customers for life, basically, yeah. and also your work? Yeah, I actually love what I do. So, and I like, you know, all the time, you know, be happy and make everyone's happy. So... The people actually eat in my cart always very happy. They have like, and I keep the price control too, everything under $10. So it's like very affordable to eat in New York City, good, healthy food. And the thing is like, you know, when you see the people, like if you're a restaurant, somebody else take your order and someone else make the food. So for me, I see the person right in my face, like, you know, eye to eye. So I know how he's going to like the food and the way they like, I make the food. That's why my business grow like this big. So is it busy a specific um, time of the year or is it busy all the time for you? Busy all the time. I'm only 11 to 3 on very short hours. So that's the problem. So everyone line up to get the chance, you know. 11 to 3 is guarantee food. After three is luck by chance. Because there is so much demand for your food and people love it, why don't you extend the hours? Is there I don't reason? have like that mind of financial capability. So if I borrow money from somebody else, then I have to listen to them. So I won't, I can be able to do what I want to do. That's why I keep it simple as it is for past 18 years. And I mean, I like won many awards. A lot of people came after that and then they offer money. But I didn't take it. I just do it myself. Because I see that with halal guys, right? They started yeah. with cart. Now they have like these small like, parts, restaurants, yeah, restaurants and, and stuff, places. Yeah. And you don't have any plans no, to I do that? I keep it like one unique. 
Let's talk a little bit about your family. We'll pivot a little and talk about your family. So you said you have one daughter, one, one daughter. wife. Yeah, uh, one wife. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what like your daughter when he, when she he... actually graduated from Columbia University? Oh wow! Economics double major and starting for working for British firm right now. Oh, great. Yeah, financial. Yeah. So she is into a completely different field yeah, very compared different, to what yeah. you're doing. Well educated, right? yeah. Do you at some point see her doing something similar, like being in the same field maybe? She just support me, you know, for the, like, sometime for social media and stuff. Mostly I do the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and stuff. So whatever help I need, she helped me out. My wife helped me out. Yeah, my friends helped me out. Tiru, let's talk a little bit about immigrants. You came here as an immigrant. Immigrant, yeah. Um, you came through the lottery program yeah. and there is so much rhetoric yeah. around these programs should be removed. How does it make you feel? Given that you came here, you worked so hard, you're a successful entrepreneur and, yeah. and because of the fact that you were able to come through yeah. this lottery program, we can have these delicious dosas in New York yeah. City, right? <laughs> yeah. So how does it make you feel when you hear all the negative rhetoric around immigration right now? Uh, very bad, you know, because everyone has dream to come to America, you know. When they come to New York, they, they think it's like, you know, it's capital of the world. So they leave everything back home to come here because to have a good life and a good family and buy a house, uh, like their dream life, you know. So if we, like the way right now is going, very, very disappointed a lot of people, you know. They have very sad life, you know. I'm very sad to see that. Everyone should get a chance, you know, one way or another to come here and, you know, have a good life or any place they like. See, for me, I just got the lottery green card, so I choose America and I choose New York as the capital. So that's why I just came straight to New York and my home is New York. So almost 25 years now I live here, just visit everywhere, but my home is only New York. That's why I named New York Dosis. Yeah, exactly. And and you're called uh, Dosa Man, right? New York Dosa is exactly your wear, and you're wearing a T-shirt that says that. Do you often go back to Sri Lanka? Well, no, no, I don't have money to go every year, so I go like five years, like six years, one time like that. Do you have Do you my, have family? Yeah, still yeah. Back my home? mother, my sister, my brother live there. As far as your wife is concerned, she gave up work and stuff to raise your yeah, daughter. Yeah. Does she at some point plan to join you in what you're doing? She back home, like home, she support, you know, may take care of the house, you know, take care of family and stuff. So, you know, yeah. And if we were to compare your cooking and your wife's cooking, how would you rate your cooking versus your wife's cooking? My wife's cooking is very different. This is like a house, you know, rice curry and stuff. This one I do is different. Those are very, not everyone can do, you know. I learned from my grandmother and my mother and then I worked in a restaurant and then I become vegan. So I invent a lot of doses, different way on experience when you do the work, you know. Why did you decide to become vegan? Healthy choice and then you learn about veganism and then you be wanted to be vegan. Yeah. What does that mean when you say... It's like you leave the milk, no de no animal product, no dairy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you are like a vegetarian, it's good also. But vegan is more, much better. It's a step beyond yeah. that. So coming back to dosas, you said it's a it's a technique. That yeah. you use. It's like a skill set that everybody doesn't have. Yeah. What, what goes into making dosa? If you were to describe it to me, somebody who's not ever made a dosa. Yeah. Um, what are some of the, you know, um, techniques that go into making a good dosa? What are, what are the things that we should keep in mind when we are trying to make a good dosa? Are there any secrets <laughs> that you can share with us? Yeah, you can use for the, a lot of people complain when they do dosa, the doesn't come out from the tower. Hmm. For the tawa, you can use like a tawa is like a grill. Hmm. Is you can use onion or potato to season it first, hmm. and then you know you got when you make the batter in America, you got to make according to the weather. In India, Sri Lanka, Asia, do you don't have problem because it's warmer weather every day, oh. so it's naturally get ferment. Here, a lot of restaurant, a lot of people use different stuff to get fermentation. I do it naturally. 
But then when you do it in the grill, so in the winter time I make the batter like more watery. Mm. In the summer time, warmer weather, I make the batter thicker. In the spring and fall, I make in between. And do you make batter uh, right before? Yeah, you one start day cooking? before. One it, day before. Oh, it has to be one day before. Yeah, it has to be one day before. And then you just bring it with in a you. container with the ice, yeah, in the cooler. And dosas are like one thing on your menu, but there are other things. No, right? dosas you can make different way. You know, like say, if you put a potato, is masala dosa. Then I invent the pandicherry as potato and multi vegetable. Eleven different mm. veggies chopped up. Mm. So, and then if you make a thicker version and put veggies in the top and cook both sides, that's mm. called uthapam. Mm. It's like a Indian pizza, no sauce. Oh, okay. No, no, like, yeah, no tomato sauce, just, you know, yeah, it's very, very healthy. As I mentioned in the beginning, you have fans all over the world, yeah. right? You have fans everywhere everywhere yeah. right um have you ever visited a country yeah. and you know found yeah. that you like met some some yeah. of your fans yeah Where? i met in london you know yeah. okay so how was the experience like goosebump goosebump <laughs> somebody recognized me in the Heathrow airport and then took a picture with me you know and then he said visit my house so Oh my no, God, yeah. that must be so nice. I know. So, um, Thiru, you have license for f- five more years yeah. um, for your car. Yeah, yeah. What, what are your future plans? Like, what will you do once the license expires? Are you going to renew and doing what you're doing? Uh, right now, I hope to do till 2024. And okay. then once it's expired, I will see if the city renewed. Then I might stay in New York. Otherwise, maybe Portland, Oregon, or California. I don't know. Oh, you're planning <laughs> on leaving us? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I don't know. Right now, it's guaranteed till 2024. After that, only if anything I am do, I will do it, you know. But I will inform everyone before that, a lot before that. Because every time I, like every day, we update everything on the... Facebook, Instagram, and, you know, Twitter. I know I follow you on Twitter, uh, and I was so disappointed because I wanted to come on Saturday and have your dosa. Uh-huh. And then you posted that you won't be there. Yeah. And I was disappointed, and my daughter was disappointed wow. even more than Sorry. I was. <laughs> she was like, oh, because we were all ready and set to go and, you know, have oh your God. dosa. So hopefully next time. Are you going to be there next Saturday? No, this Saturday, no. Next Saturday, actually not. And 21st. I have a Wendy Award, you know, I was nominated for the Wendy's. Oh. So I already won in 2007. Can you talk a little bit about that award? Sure. So it's actually street vendor project. They started like a union for street vendors. And then they like inform all the vendors and stuff. And you have to know, I'm the first nominee for the Wendy Award in 2005. Yeah, I was the first vendor to be nominated. So popular, you know. And then you, yeah. you got the award. No, I won in, actually, that time, a lot of judges and a lot of people don't know what is vegan and stuff. Hmm. So I kind of like beginning time, you know. So people, I become second in 2005 and 2006. 2007, I won the court. You won it? Yeah, I won the award, yeah. Wow. So, um, it's what? out of 10,000 cart in New York. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. So now they're doing for this year is like uh, September 21st. It's going to be a last Wendy Award. No more after that. Why is that? They're going out of business. Oh. Yeah. And like before you remember, I had a Satya newspaper. No. It's New York. It's pretty popular in East Village and stuff. You know, it's ah. Satya is called. It's, it's kind of like an English newspaper, magazine kind of. Right. So I was written up a couple of times on that magazine too. They ran out of business too. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. So, um, Siru, how often are you in uh, Washington Square Park? Usually Monday through Saturday. 11 to 3 is guaranteed food. And we actually post every morning to make sure everyone to make their plans, you know. Or if people are coming from far away and stuff, different countries, they actually email me or call me or they text me on my number. So they find your number. They have it. Well, the fan oh. club, they get it from the fan club and online they can get it, you know. So if somebody were to have, try your dosa, where should they go to find all this information? They can Google NY dosas and they get it. And they can go to my website or they can email me on NY dosas. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. 
<laughs> yeah, it's enlisted in a lot of tour guidebooks and vegan guidebooks, you know. If you Google Dosa Man or NY Dosas, you will get all my information. And before we wrap up, I always ask my guests this question, and yeah. it's if you were to describe America in a word or a sentence, how would you describe it? It's like opportunity for the world, you know. Hmm. It's kind of like a... It's like a lot of freedom here. If you don't make it in New York, it's very hard for you to make it anywhere else. Because you got, it's, I won't believe that people say there's no job in New York, you know. There's several jobs in New York. The thing is, you have to make effort to put and like, okay, I want to do this. If in the beginning, will be a lot of struggle, you know. Like me, I, I was struggle a lot, I, you know. So that's the way it is, life, you know. It's not every time you can come on the top, you know. Not everybody. Some people win a lot or they'll be in the top. And million people in the bottom, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thiru. This was wonderful. And we will be posting information about um, your fan club. We'll put access to your Twitter on our website so that sure. people can follow. We'll put Twitter handle there. Uh, and thank you so much again. Once again, uh, yeah, it was wonderful so talking much. to you, it's and I am nice. definitely going to try your dosas. Please, so yeah. maybe one of these days during this week, I can come and yeah. have your dosas. Thank you, thank you. Always, you can text me or call me one day before, so make sure I'm there. You know, I yeah. will absolutely do that. Yeah. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the podcast. We have a GoFundMe. You can donate to that. Every dollar counts information is on our website and also in the description for this episode until next time when we have another amazing story in the meantime stay connected 